So I'm gonna give you a few tips now on how you can create a move set that not only works for you and your character, but also helps the emotional connection with the crowd and takes your performance to another level. The first thing I'll say is, and I learned this one the hard way, choose moves you can do to absolutely anyone. I'm talking the largest opponent, the smallest opponent, the greenest opponent, the oldest opponent. Think of moves that you can do in any situation without any real preparation and make sure that you can nail them 100% of the time. I know that in my early days, I was put in situations where I saw moves that I thought were really cool and really inspired me and, and I tried to hit them on larger opponents and, and it just became an absolute schmozzle because I didn't have the strength, it didn't make sense, it made them look weak, it made me look pathetic, it just wasn't the right way to go. Also, if you choose moves that are complex and complicated and, and you need to practice it several times with your opponent just to hit it, well, what's going to happen if you're on a show and you only have 10 minutes to prepare? I can tell you that happens more often than not. So choose something that you know you can do 10 out of 10 times. Also, think about what's going to work for you, your size, your character, and how you want to portray yourself. If you're this massive heavyweight and and you want to be intimidating and drive fear into your opponents and create this aura of, of, uh, of ruthlessness, well, your moveset probably isn't going to include a lot of slow, methodical, technical wrestling. Although you can use bits here and there if appropriate, but for the most part, you want to choose things that support that image. One of the things I tell a lot of new talent when they come through and they're selecting their moveset is choose just one move from every situation. I mean a submission hold, a top rope move, a suplex, uh, a move you would do onto a grounded opponent, a move you would do if you're charging off the ropes. Think of one from every situation and just one, no more than that. Because as soon as you start getting three, four, five moves from every situation, you run into a lot of problems. The first problem is you could confuse yourself and even though you feel like you've got this massive database now, you get into a match and, and you're in a position where your, your opponent's on the ground and, and now you're stuck deciding whether you're going to hit the leg drop or the elbow drop or the fist drop. Have that one move and know exactly what you're going to hit. Make sure it's autopilot, it's second nature. Then you can put more effort into things like your character, your selling, your emotion, the way you connect to the audience. This isn't to say you can't have a secondary move from that situation. Sometimes you need an ace up your sleeve. You need something extra if the match calls for it. But for the most part, establish that one move. Make sure the crowd knows exactly what's going to happen as soon as you hit that body slam, as soon as you charge off that rope. I mean, it worked for The Rock, didn't it? And my next point may be my most important. If you have that one big move, maybe it's a finishing move like a, a brain buster, where you put them in a suplex position, you lift them up, you drop them on their heads, one, two, three. But what if earlier in the show, you hit two or three other moves from that position? You hit a, a snap suplex, you hit a stalling vertical suplex. Well, you've failed to create any sort of expectation. The crowd now knows that if you put them in a suplex position, it could be one of four things. And maybe if it is the brain buster, you get a little clap but we want that crowd to know exactly what's coming next when you set it up. Think about John Cena's big moves. Think about the attitude adjustment. If John Cena scooped them up over his shoulder and instead of flipping them over to their backs, he just fell back with a Samoan drop, do you really think he would get the same response? I think he could be breaking the trust of the fans. And now when he scoops them up, he won't get the same reaction. Create that one move, set the expectation, and pay it off when the time's right. Also, think about your opponent. If you've set a match where you have three, four, five different things from the same setup, what happens if one of you gets confused? What if you, you get the wrong cue? You think you're a different part of the match? It's a surefire way to create confusion and doubt when all of that brain power should be spent on other parts of the match and your performance. As with every other aspect of professional wrestling and performance, we need to be unique. We want to stand out from the pack and make sure we're not lost in the shuffle. And what that means for you is creating that move set 
where you're not just stealing moves from top stars in the wrestling world, where you're not doing the same moves as other wrestlers on the same show. Now, how can you do that? One way is just be aware, be alert. If you see people working on their match before the show and you see that they're perhaps attempting a similar move to what you're doing, change it up. If you have a monitor backstage and you can actually watch the show as it goes on, then do so. Do whatever you can to make sure that your match isn't similar to the last. Because when it is, you will not get the same reaction you would have had it been fresh. So those are a few tips for creating your own moveset, but ultimately, it's up to you. If something doesn't work, don't be afraid to scrap it and bring something new in. And if that finally gets the response that you've been looking for, well, great, you've now got a new wrestling move for your wrestling menu. If you want to see more videos like this, click on the subscribe button, spread the word, and if you have any questions or requests for World Beater Wrestling, don't be afraid to comment below.